All right, everybody, welcome back to the next video. Today, we're gonna briefly discuss the bay pairing. This is an important pairing on the torsion of elliptic curves. We've used it a few times already. We're gonna use it even more times in the future. We used it to see that the P torsion field attached to an elliptic curve over Q contains the peeth roots of unity. We secretly used it to show that P attic Galois representations attached to elliptic curves over Q have cyclotomic determinant. It's, it's used all over the place. It's a very handy thing. So let's discuss this from an algebraic perspective. What is the Vey pairing? Well, let's let K be a field with characteristic zero. Let's let N be a natural number and let's let mu sub N be the group of nth roots of unity in the algebraic closure of K, which I'll denote by K bar. If you're working in Q bar, of course, this can be viewed as the usual cyclic group of order N when working uh, um, in that field. Okay, and so if E over K is an elliptic curve, recall we talked about this when we were discussing basic elliptic curve theory, the N torsion of E is isomorphic to Z mod NZ squared. The V pairing on the N torsion of E then is a pairing which is usually denoted E sub N from big E sub N cross big E sub N to mu sub N, the nth roots of unity. And it's built via the following pretty neat prescription. So I'll, I'll break this into two slides. What you do, you take two n torsion points for E. Let's call them P and Q. They don't have to be different. They can be, they can be non-distinct. Let's take a function F in the field of K bar rational functions on E. So this is like the rational functions on E that have K bar coefficients. If I take such a function F, I can make what's called the principal divisor of F. It's a formal sum written div F. And what it is, is it's trying to keep track of points on the curve where F vanishes, where F has pulls to what order and to what degree respectively. So what it is, is it's the sum over all points P and E of V sub P of F times this parentheses P symbol. Now this parentheses P symbol, it's a completely formal symbol. It's just meant to be a placeholder, formally speaking for the point P and E. So for every single point P and E, there will be one of these formal symbols in the sum. And then what are these V sub P of Fs? That's simple. V sub P of F is the valuation of F at P. It's the order of vanishing of F at P. And so if F doesn't have a pole or a zero at P, this will just be zero, okay? And so this point basically will not be included in the sum because its coefficient will be zero. And you just have to keep in mind that a negative value of V sub P of F indicates a pole to that order of F at P. Okay, so like a two P would mean that F vanishes to order two at P. But a negative two P would mean that F has a pull of order two at P, you see? Okay, now it turns out you can always find a function. So I'm, remember, I have these P and these Qs in the, in the N torsion of E. You can always find a function F, which depends on Q in K bar E. So it's a K bar rational function on E, whose divisor is just N times the formal point Q minus N times the formal point zero, where zero is the identity element of E. Remember, E is an abelian group under the addition law collinear triples sum to zero, okay? So we can, in other words, I can always find a function in K bar E that vanishes to order N at Q and has a pole of order N at the neutral element of the group, okay? So this is a standard fact in algebraic geometry. I would see like Silverman one for this. Okay, so let's let bracket N from E to E be the multiplication by N map. Now let's take Q prime to be an N squared torsion point of E, any N squared torsion point of E, such that when you multiply it by N, you get Q. Of course you can find such a point, right? What you check then with a little bit of elbow grease is that what's the divisor of F compose multiplication by N? That's the question. Well, it turns out to just be N times the sum over all n torsion points of E, which I'll call S, of the formal point Q prime plus S minus the formal point S, okay? Now, you can also prove using basic divisor theory, again, see Silverman one or, or somewhere for this, this right-hand side here. This actually must be N times div G for some G, which also depends on Q, of course, because F does, in K bar E. And so what you have, you have div, F composed multiplication by N must be div, uh, sorry, must be N div G. Let's write that one more time. This is N div G for some G depending on Q and K bar E. 
okay, what does it mean if the divisor of f composed multiplication by n equals n times div g? If you just think about what a divisor means, that means f composed n must be g to the n, right? The numbers out in front of divisors can be moved up as powers of the functions inside the divisor operator, right? Okay, so we have f composed multiplication by n is g to the n, possibly after scaling by some non-zero constant, of course. Okay, but that won't be relevant. If x now is any point in e, let's look at what happens. Let's look at g of x plus p to the n power. What is that? Well, what's g of something to the n power? It's f compose n of that thing. So we should get f compose multiplication by n of x, multiplication by n of p added together. Okay, this is again, just following from the fact that f compose multiplication by n is g to the n. Now, what is f of multiplication by n of x plus multiplication by n of p? Well, what's multiplication by n of p? p is an n torsion point, right? So that's zero. So this is just f of multiplication by n of x. But what's f of multiplication by n of x? It's g of x to the n, because again, g to the n is f composed multiplication by n. And so we see here that g to the n, its argument is invariant under translation by p, some point in the n torsion of e. Okay, so let's take g of x plus p to the n and let's divide it by, I'm sorry, let's take g of x plus p, let's divide it by g of x. Of course, that's a k bar rational function on e. Now, I know its nth power is one, right? Because g of x plus p to the n divided by g of x to the n from this equation is just one. Well, that's just the same thing as saying g of x plus p over g of x all to the nth power is one. In other words, the nth power of this function is one. So that means the image of this function lies in the nth roots of unity, right? By definition. Okay, but this function can be thought of as a map from E to P1 of K bar, the projective line, K bar points. And this map, this function thought of as this map, it's a non-surjective map of curves because its image lies in mu sub n. Well, by basic algebraic geometry, you've got yourself a non-surjective map of curves, right? So this map has to be actually constant. The image point of this map, which lies in mu sub n, that's going to be defined to be e sub n of p cubed. That is the Vey pairing. One uh, that is e sub n when p and q plug in. So that's how you define the Vey pairing. Okay. So you give me a p and q. I cook up this function. I look at its image. It happens to live in mu sub n. Its image happens to be constant. So that point is the Vey pairing acting on P and Q. Okay, who cares? I mean, what kind of properties does this have? Well, first of all, it's bilinear. If I do E sub n of AP plus BP prime, comma CQ plus DQ prime, that's just EN of PQ to the AC power times EN of PQ prime to the AD power times EN of P prime Q to the BC power times EN of P prime Q prime to the BD power. So we have bilinearity. It's also alternating and so automatically skew symmetric. In other words, E sub n of QQ is always one. And so E sub n of QP is E sub n of PQ to the negative first. Okay, so that's the alternating and the skew symmetric. It's non-degenerate, which is important. So it, E sub n of PQ is one. If that happens for all n torsion points P, it better be the case that Q is just zero, okay? We don't want trivial output for all inputs unless the other input's zero. Okay, and then very importantly, last thing, well, second to last thing, this is a Galois invariant pairing. If I take E sub n of PQ and I act on it with sigma, an element of the absolute Galois group of K, I can move the sigma inside. The sigma commutes with the Vey pairing. I just get E sub n of P to the sigma Q to the sigma. And it's this property here that allows you to see, for example, that P torsion is in, or P roots of unity are in the P torsion field of the, Fry curve, for example, or, or elliptic curves over Q in general. It's this property right here that allows you to see that these p-adic Galois representations attached to elliptic curves, cyclotomic determinant, p-adic cyclotomic determinant. It, this is a very crucial property. This is one of the star properties of, of the Vey pairing. One last thing that I didn't write here, the, Ga uh, the Vey pairing is also isomorphism invariant. Right? So if I have an isomorphism of elliptic curves, uh, the Vey pairing it's is preserved by that isomorphism. Okay. So what I mean by that is like 
E sub n of P Q is the same as E sub n phi of P phi of Q, where phi is an isomorphism of elliptic curves over K, let's say. All right. So uh, next time we'll get into a little bit of algebraic geometry. I'll talk about the curves fields correspondence. We'll need that when we go to try to construct modular curves, not as complex curves, but as algebraic curves over Q. So thanks for watching and I'll see you then.